Stefano Tricarico is dying of a paralyzing illness. Now he's making the journey to a clinic that he thinks might save him. I want to make myself useful to the world and to myself. When you are too attached to life, you never want to leave it. This man says his clinic holds the key to keeping Stefano and possibly millions like him alive. I'm proud to be the first person in the world to record the many effects of embryonic stem cells. I often feel I'm the executor of God's will. But to some, he's a charlatan, preying on patients who've no other hope. We don't understand how these stem cells are being used, and there have been no publications of studies explaining how his methods work. The clinic's work has its roots in events that took place here in Ukraine nearly 20 years ago. In 1986, the nuclear reactor at Chernobyl exploded, spreading radioactive dust across the region. It created a massive long-term health problem. In the Kiev region alone, nearly a million people still suffer its effects, with conditions ranging from diabetes to blood anemia and cancer. It forced the state to fund new research into repairing tissue and blood cells. And in Ukraine, one man, Professor Alexander Smikadov, was already at the forefront of this work. He soon found an effect that would become key. It became clear that problems of muscle and cell wasting did not occur if embryonic cells were at work. For example, if you make a cut in a newborn rat or its embryo. These were my first observations. We soon realized the power of embryonic stem cells. This sealed container holds samples of what makes the professor's treatment work. Stem cells from aborted fetuses frozen in liquid nitrogen. Stem cells act as the factory of our entire body. They can reproduce themselves by dividing and multiplying into identical cells, giving them the potential to form any type of tissue. Stem cells offer the possibility of repairing every tissue in the body. And so it would seem to me, at least if you let your imagination run wild for a few seconds, that stem cell therapy has the potential to cure all diseases where the problem is at the cellular level. So for example, in a stroke patient where a part of the brain has been damaged, one can imagine a situation where you can inject cells to merely repair and to replenish the tissue that's gone. I think that stem cell biology and stem cell therapy will simply and purely revolutionize medicine. To most of the world, this revolution is still many years away. But because of the need for research after Chernobyl, Professor Smikadov has been able to use stem cells on patients since the early 90s. We're lucky in Ukraine. In 1991, the Health Ministry approved a document which allowed clinical work with embryonic stem cells, though they did it without knowing exactly what they were doing. So while everywhere else they were only thinking about research, we were already working with it in practice. Smikadov, 
a professor at Ukraine's medical university, bases his private clinic, called MCEL, in one of Kiev's biggest hospitals. It's one of the few allowed to perform organ and cell transplants. And it's here that Stefano will come for treatment. Most stem cells used in research in the West are taken from either adults or clinically created embryos less than a few days old. But the professor's clinic uses material from fetuses aborted at between three and eight weeks. There are broadly three different types of stem cells extracted from the fetus, colored according to their group. One color is given for stem cells which will develop into skin, brain, and hair. One for blood, bone, and muscle tissue, and another for stem cells for internal organs like the liver or pancreas. These are kept frozen in what's called a single cell suspension. It's tested before being transplanted into each patient. But to create these requires a lot of fetal material. It is the will of God. If you can help a living person through the use of dead aborted material, you have to do this. In the United States in a single year, there are 600,000 children suffering from muscular dystrophy. Yet out of the dead fetal material which could be used to treat them, only 0.01% is ever used. All the rest is either burned in ovens or flushed down the toilet. Smikadub's M-cell clinic receives about 300 patients a year, paying up to £10,000 for each stem cell treatment. Some, like 11-year-old Jana, who has anemia, are local, referred here by their own doctor. Others have come from abroad, like Lawrence Feinstein, a British multiple sclerosis sufferer from Guildford. He began stem cell treatment after coming off his NHS prescribed drugs. He knows what he's talking about. I'm very pleased to be treated by him because I'm very happy with the way he looks after him. He can see a difference in my entire kind of well, uh, way I'm behaving and the way I'm acting, the way I'm speaking. Because one of the biggest things that, that you don't see, you see, is the way you feel. And I can tell you now that you feel much better. The patients here seem convinced that Smikadov's treatment is helping them. Five years ago, Angelo Maori was a wealthy city financier. Now he's almost completely paralyzed by amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, or ALS, a form of motor neuron disease. He depends on full-time nursing and is unable to speak. With tiny hand movements and a head control cursor, he used his laptop to talk about what he calls the real scientific future. I am proactive and confident that I can win my personal war. After five years of ALS, I should be dead. But now I can see light at the end of the tunnel. The clinic had once thought senior Maori too ill to treat. Now they want to show how stem cells are helping them. How he can move his legs. It's completely impossible before the treatment. The professor says these movements are evidence of the cell's ability to actually restore muscle in the limbs. In a regular medical practice and in routine therapy, you never observe the results like this. So in the world, it's the first example, never happened before. It's a surprise for us. News of the work being done by MCEL and Professor Smikadob has spread among those with incurable conditions like muscular dystrophy and MS. Using the internet, he's bypassed Western medical journals and any independent review of his work.
two years ago, word of his work reached Termoli on Italy's Adriatic coast with dramatic consequences for one young man's life. For Stefano Tricarico, every movement has become a challenge. Each week he has physiotherapy for his condition, Duchenne's muscular dystrophy, or DMD. It's a genetic disease, which means Stefano lacks a protein called dystrophy, needed for his muscles to work and grow. Without it, they slowly waste away, leaving him virtually paralyzed at just 20 years old. It was only diagnosed when he was six. His mother decided then not to tell him the truth, that death comes to most sufferers in their mid-twenties. Stefano asked, Mummy, why are you crying? And because he was six years old, he was little, I replied, because I have a headache and I'm crying. From that day, I promised myself that I would not cry again, never in front of him so as not to make him suffer. Stefano must grow up like any other normal child. He must laugh. I must do everything so that he won't suffer. By the age of nine, Stefano was having enormous difficulty walking. Soon after these pictures were taken at his first Holy Communion, his legs simply gave up. It was on that day when I sat down, which was the day of my Holy Communion. The next day, or two days later, when I tried to get up, I did it. But I was sweating a lot, and really, I only just managed it. So I just sat down, and even straining myself, I never got up again. As he grew older, Stefano was still ignorant of the truth of his condition. Specialists spoke only of his body's slow deterioration. He became dependent on a motorized wheelchair as his arm and leg muscles wasted away. Then he was contacted by an uncle in Germany who'd been given an internet address. It belonged to Emcel, the website of Professor Smikadol. But in order to convince him to research it, the uncle told Stefano what his mother had not, that his disease was fatal. In the beginning, I didn't want to believe it, because everyone tries to avoid these things. But I think I got over it, thanks really to EMSA, thanks to the clinic we found, because it turned on a light that I thought I'd never find again. To raise the money to go, the family began a campaign on local television. The town raised enough money to allow the family to travel to the M-Cell clinic in Kiev, their first ever trip abroad. Professor Smikadov's treatment seemed to have a positive effect on Stefano's condition. One specialist wrote that it might even have stabilized. The professor told him he had to start using a knife and fork because he could already do that movement, and now he uses a fork. Now he can write where before he couldn't. Not very fast, but he can write. But Stefano's television campaign had also alerted muscular dystrophy groups in Italy. The director of one began checking Emcel's website to find out more about the treatment. Even though his own son had muscular dystrophy, he was unimpressed. I was fairly sceptical, first of all because of the way things were put, which was very different from the usual kind of scientific language. Secondly, because of the lack of informative detail, which is what you need in order to understand exactly what takes place at this clinic. And finally, because there was a complete absence of any objective confirmation of their statements. 
We don't understand how these stem cells are being used, and there have been no publications of studies explaining how his methods work. I'm afraid it's impossible for me to say for certain that they're doing anything worthwhile. The money for Stefano's campaign in Termoli began to drop away after Senior Bocella wrote to local fundraisers warning them about M-cell. The family insisted the clinic's treatment was still helping. The decisive factor is my breathing. The doctors were on the point of wanting me to use a ventilator at night, and now all I know is I don't have to use one. Also, when I used to sing before, I couldn't. My voice was always the same. Now you can hear the difference when I go higher or go lower. These young people are often under the illusion that they can be cured and that is very, very seriously damaging because when they finally realize there is no treatment which will help them, that their condition will never improve, the damage this causes them, the depression it causes is terrible. The family still had enough money for Stefano to go to Kiev this summer, perhaps for the last time. They've set off to meet the professor for their first appointment. The emergency hospital seems grim, its facilities worn and basic. After the long dark corridors, the M-cell clinic seems almost futuristic, a private outpost in a state institution. There, waiting for them, is Professor Smikadol. He greets you as if you're a member of his family. He also knows how to put your mind at rest, because he has an amusing face and he's a bit tubby. So he makes you laugh in a nice way. Stefano came to us when he was 18, when total dystrophy had already developed, which is one step short of dying. His condition has now been stabilized. Then it's time for Stefano's transfusion. The stem cells selected for him are taken from a six week old fetus. They're injected into a drip of saline solution flowing into Stefano's arm. It's the first of three treatments he'll be given over the next few days. Они лишены антигенных свойств. Они опять будут жить у Стефана, как вот э, его собственные клетки, ничем ему не вредя и только помогая. The first thing that Stefano feels is heat, a symptom of the stem cells passing through the bloodstream, causing his blood vessels to dilate. Mi sento un po' caldo, proprio accallato, pure il viso, tutto il corpo mi sento abbastanza caldo. The transfusion lasts 40 minutes. What happens next is unclear, even to the professor. At this stage of the operation, it's difficult to explain the precise way in which these stem cells act. 
We think that the embryonic stem cells are the healthy carriers of the gene which has been damaged. They produce the dystrophine protein missing in muscular dystrophy cases. This is then taken on board by the patient's damaged muscles. He claims his research shows that stem cells working this way have massively increased the flexibility of damaged muscles. But other stem cell researchers doubt it could be so effective. One of the reasons I'm so doubtful is because our early animal experiments from my own lab and from several other labs around the world have shown that very, very small numbers of stem cells actually make it in terms of uh, reaching the site of damage and in fact beginning to differentiate into the tissue of choice. And that's because most of these cells are dying. They're not in the right environment. We haven't found the correct way to persuade them to carry on differentiating and proliferating once we put them into the body. Soon, the first day's treatment is over. In the next few days, Stefano's therapy will intensify. That night, in their hotel room, the strain on his mother begins to show. Any other parent, if they found themselves in this position, they would do the same thing. A mother who is desperate and a father who is desperate. I don't want to say any more. I just live for Stefano. You'll be the best The next day, at the hospital, Professor Smikhodob seems enthusiastic. Болезнь развивается, она только наблюдается, лечение не существует. Вот вы видите, что оно существует. Given such remarkable claims, it's surprising that Smikadov's work remains largely unrecognized. Though it's hung all over the walls, it's yet to be published in any Western medical journal and is rarely presented at Western conferences. Я считаю, что мы I don't believe our achievements have yet received the worldwide respect they deserve. I've written to Western clinical journals, both in the United States and in England. I wrote to them, but I didn't receive any answer. He submitted an abstract to us, um, outlining that he had treated a number of patients. Um, some of them he had given more than one course of the treatment to, and they felt better for it. Now, that isn't um, scientific data. That's anecdote. Um, we would expect any clinician who's conducting a proper scientific study in order to determine whether something works or not to, for example, have a placebo group so that we can determine whether people are feeling better because um, of the treatment or simply because they think they're receiving the treatment and also we'd expect some sort of independent assessment. The professor's methods have also been criticized. For example, his injection of stem cells directly into the abdomen, as here with Signor Mauri, the patient with motor neurone disease. We showed this process to Dr. Mehmet. So it looks as if the doctor is injecting something into the abdomen without much attention to exactly where. I'm not aware of any evidence claiming that subcutaneous skin injections effectively of stem cells would successfully allow those cells to migrate to areas of the body that need 
to be regenerated, such as muscle. From what I'm seeing, highly suspect. But the professor seems unconcerned about getting an independent review of his work in order to get it published. To his critics, that's easy to explain. The only reason I can think of is that this is complete bunkum and actually there is no clinical benefit and the clinic concerned are probably worried that if they do open their doors to proper scientific uh, examination that they will be uh, exposed. Я должен должен написать статью, которую должны взять в журнал. So does this mean that I have to write an article which will be published in a journal and that only after that will I be respected? No, I do not think my mission lies there. My mission is to cure, to help as many patients as possible and then I can be respected. Помочь как можно большему числу пациентов и тогда меня оценят. Пишем диссертации. We write dissertations and then we are published in journals. They don't take us in your journals. One time they didn't even have space to post our presentation. So tell me, who is to blame? <laughs> Stefano's treatment ends on the third day with stem cell injections into his stomach. The effects seem positive. Tutto bene. Io sono forte. Tutto supero. E non mi sento più ehm, più elastico. Più come si può dire? Ehm, più fluido nei movimenti. But without independent clinical trials, it's impossible to know if this is a breakthrough or little more than a placebo. And yet, despite his critics, Smikadov's clinic still receives the full backing of the hospital and Ukraine's National Medical University. He doesn't need anyone to justify or defend him. Professor Smikadov is a completely established medical scientist. His methods have always been radical as far as traditional medicine is concerned, so it's obvious that they would always be criticized. But I think that work in this field could turn out to be a serious scientific breakthrough. I'm worried that there will be a backlash from the public in a few years' time, because what will happen is, as, as more and more patients uh, begin to suffer the ill effects of, of badly controlled uh, clinical treatment using stem cells, then the public in the West will start to sit up and take notice and reject stem cell therapy outright. And I think that would be a tragedy. Now back in Termoli, Stefano says he feels no ill effects and doesn't care about these concerns. He just hopes that they won't stop him or others from getting a treatment he believes in. I'm making an appeal, not to the parents of kids like me, but to the kids themselves, to say you have to convince your parents to try this road if you want to live a dignified life like other human beings. Not because I threw myself into it blind, but because I realized it was the only chance I had if I wanted to continue to have a decent life. If you'd like to be reminded about upcoming This World programs, please text This World to 81010 and we'll send you a text message to alert you before each broadcast. Text costs no more than 15p.